Hey guys, I know that there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, and I just feel like uh, with everything going on, with frustration on Facebook, with people uh, disgruntled about having to wear face masks, uh, having to wear masks even in church, I, I just, I, I want to open up the Word of God, and I want to look at two particular passages uh, that I want to remind us of, uh, that I want to uh, just lay before you guys, and, and I hope it's an encouragement, and I hope uh, this brief discussion that we're having here would be something that um, in the end helps us to consider other people while also honoring the Lord. And so there, there, there are two passages um, that I want to talk about. The first one is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. And ev evidently there was some confusion, some frustration about a, a dispute that had to do with meat. And uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul is talking about how, how everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. He says, you know, if, if somebody offers you meat, and if that meat has been sacrificed to idols, for your conscience, sure, go ahead and eat the meat. But he says, if you eating that meat causes someone else to stumble, Paul says, I'm not going to eat it anymore. In fact, he, he, here's what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse uh, 23. He says, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything builds up. No one is to seek their own good, but the good of the other person. Fast forward down to verse 31. He says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I also try to please everyone in everything, not seeking my own benefit. I know for a lot of us, we may feel like wearing a mask is ridiculous we may feel like it's something that we don't want to do. We may feel like it's infringing on our particular rights. And I look at the Apostle Paul, who uh, no doubt was questioned with, hey, you know, you're eating meat? That doesn't seem right, you know? It's, it, it was a sacrifice to idols. And Paul says, it's permissible for me, but if it causes someone else to fall, if it causes someone else to struggle, I'm not going to eat it anymore. Because Paul says, in the end, it's not about me. It's about them. It's about them. And so consider that, that even though we may have a certain perspective, other people may not. I think Paul, if he were here today, would say, let's consider other people's perspective. I think that's important. The second passage I want to bring up is in uh, the book of James. James chapter 1. Uh, you know James, he's the brother of Jesus. And uh, in, in, the, in the letter that he's writing here, he's writing it to uh, the 12 tribes dispersed abroad. He, he's writing to Jewish Christians. And the Jewish Christians were uh, dealing with some difficult times, trials, frustrations, politically, um, socioeconomically, uh, to a certain degree, even uh, racist enemies who were going against them. And, and James starts the letter out pretty, pretty poignantly. Here's what he says in verse 2. He says, Consider it great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. The big words that pop out to me in that section are the very first ones. Consider it great joy when you go through various trials. Some of us, no doubt, feel like we are going through trials. Some of us, no doubt, may feel like we're going through a very difficult time, a trying, a telling time in our country and in our world. And I'm, I'm right there with you. But it's so great to be a follower of Jesus. Because when craziness is happening out there, as a Christian, having a biblical worldview, you and I know that the trials we walk through now are simply leading us to the future then. These trials, the endurance that Paul's talking about here is really something that, that you and I can look at and go, man, as a Christian, I can consider all of the trials, all of this frustration that I'm going through as pure joy. And so, for example, gathering on Sunday, sure, we may have to wear a mask indoors, but the truth is, is that we can consider it pure joy that still we live in a country that can allow us to open up this book and post a video like this to Facebook and and, and talk about who our God is and the way that our God interacts with people. And that's special. We need to consider that pure joy. We need to consider it pure joy that we can 
be walking uh, outside church on Sunday and we can look each other in our eyes and we can uh, pray for one another and we can do life still together. We need to consider it pure joy when we go through various trials. I just look at this moment in history and I, I'm excited to think that you know, 15, 30, 40, 50, even 60 years from now, who knows what the landscape in the United States is going to be, especially when it comes to this book. I just hope that all of us will be able to look back at 2020 and go, man, it sure was crazy out there, but I had a lot of joy in here. And I was able to experience a lot of endurance in that season because I know how this story is ending for me. And I know how this story is ending for the people who believe in Jesus. And so um, I, hope, I hope that this is encouragement to someone. I didn't even know what I was going to say. I'm just speaking off the cuff here. But um, I feel like this is important for us just as a church here in Rogue River to just have a biblical perspective on everything going on, to consider other people's perspective when it comes to wearing masks, but to also look at this situation and go, hey, it's crazy, but I'm going to consider it pure joy. This is an opportunity, and this is a time for the church to really show the people of the world that when everybody else is angry, when everybody else is super sad, when everybody else is really scared, we can look at them and say, hey, I have a hope. I have a hope, and that hope is in Jesus. In fact, you want to know about him. So I hope this is encouraging. Love you guys so much. Um, if you want to talk about this, shoot me an email. Love to have a conversation with you guys. You're a wonderful group of people, and it's just a privilege to serve alongside every single one of you. Love you guys. Have a good rest of your day. See ya.